Welcome to the Republic Forum. I'm Jeff, and with me tonight, I have a guest, uh, Mr. Peter DiPiola, because Tom's just too freaking lazy to come. How's that? <laughs> That's good. That works for me. <laughs> anyway, he, he's very busy up at uh, the Oaks. He, evidently, there are a lot of people out sick. You know, they got the COVID. <laughs> cough, cough. And uh, so they're not there to do bingo. I think he just likes going to bingo. I would, too. Uh, yeah. So anyway, welcome to the show, Peter. And uh, let's see. We're, uh, like the uh, disclaimer says, everything is just our opinion. Not necessarily a fact. I... But um, we've got some interesting conversations to take part. We've got interesting things happening all over the country. So we're going to bounce around, and if you want to give us a call, maybe we'll take it. Maybe we won't, depending on where we are. But anyway, I uh, hope everybody had a great day. And uh, where do you want to start? Well, I think one good place to start is let, let's go back to education. All I right. think that's a fun place to be. Um, it's also a sad place to be right now. So I think with all the things going on, I think there's two pieces of education we could talk about. One is the absolute tragedy that happened in Texas. We can, we can certainly touch on that a little bit. Um, but I think we could also talk about what is going on in the world of education here in Connecticut. Um, one of the things I'd, I'd like to continue to do is just point out resources, information, that parents can go to keep themselves educated and abreast of what's going on in the world of education. Uh, we should not be surprised at what is happening in our classrooms, nor be surprised with what is happening with our children. Uh, we're all busy. Parents are busy. They're, they're trying to keep everything afloat, especially today with the rising cost of everything from gas to food, uh, the shrinking dollar. Uh, and we're just seeing the beginning of this. I think there are a lot of expectations that nothing is going to go down in cost. It'll only continue to go up. So with all that pressure on parents, they can't forget to keep their eyeballs on their kids and all the things that, that, they're, that they're doing. So it's a busy time of year. We have a few more weeks before school gets out, and then we get summer break. So some of the things I want to touch on are where are we today and what's coming in the fall. Well, you know, I think that's a great place to start and, uh, because, you know, what's happening here at home really affects us. Uh, you know, I, I will agree what the, there was a tragedy in Texas. And, you know, we can talk about that in the second half of the show and uh, give some callers out there, you know, a chance to come up with some ideas about that. But, you know, uh, as you said, it's very important for us to know what's going on right here in this state, what's happening in your town. What your children are being taught, and I, I can't agree more with you right now, the uh, pressure that parents are under, you know, with uh, the rising costs, everything, the lack of time that they have, and the outside influence that's coming in and actually kind of, I want to say, stealing your child from you. You know, with the, uh, when the teachers say, you know, they're not your kids, they're our kids, and things like that and some of the curriculum i mean you know i was listening to the radio today and there and they, some wtic and they were saying they're teaching kindergarten gardeners about sex toys i, I find that hard to believe you know but it, it could be wow i i don't know the answer to that one well i um, didn't, didn't i i'd heard it on the radio and i'm just passing it on but you know with the you look at world events and it really doesn't surprise me. I mean, you know, this has been going on for a long time. Um, it, anyway, I could I could touch all kinds of third rails here. From you know, we we got God out of the government. We're mm -hmm. got, getting God. We got him out of the schools. You know, if they could get him out of the churches, they would do that. But you know, as we get more and more ungodly, or following that, uh, our society seems to be collapsing upon itself. And it's making it harder and harder for, uh, you know, moms and dads to control things. I mean, look at the media today. Uh, not necessarily radio, because we can't do a whole lot here. But, you know, the, the television programs that are out there and things like this, even the video games. Uh, you know, uh, Tom and I talked years ago about how violent they were and how uh, it desensitizes people. And now they want, uh, you have this large group of people that want to, to, be, to be able to abort a baby when its head is crowning. I mean, 
Where are we going? But anyway, enough of that. Let's let's get back to Connecticut. Well, but you did touch on a couple of really important pieces there that connect for moms and dads and grandparents and the students of Connecticut. And and that is the the push to to change the role that God plays in our society is really important. The faith and family component and and we've talked about this in in our area a lot. Um, in our household and, and in our world, is faith and family we view as the bookends of life. You you have to have a strong faith, and that helps you with keeping a strong family. And and you don't keep your faith strong by staying out of church or what, however you worship, whether it's church or syn- synagogue, whatever whatever version you you worship with. But you have to have a strong faith. Um, that gives you your foundation, along with family. You know how you how you keep your family structure together, and and I'm not here to comment or judge on the different structures that are within a family. There's a lot of pressures on on people that make up that family. It could be aunts or uncles. It could be grandparents. It can be you know half related, semi related people. But if that's your family, then you got to keep it together. What happens in that family influences these children when they go to school. So one of the things that we did in our house that was very important is we had dinner together. That was the time, not in front of the TV, but to sit around the table and have conversations. And I'm sure half the audience out there is saying, well, that's pretty old-fashioned. No, you don't make it old-fashioned. You make it new fashion today. And it doesn't matter if you're having a McDonald's burger or a pizza or a home-cooked meal, you sit down at the table. You turn off the TV. You put down your devices for that 20 minutes. And it gives you a chance to connect with your children. That's one of the things I think that was essential to having a strong family. So whether it's one child or two or five or ten, they can connect to what's going on. The parents stay engaged. And that's how you keep the conversation alive. If the kids are walking through the house with their headphones on, either listening to music, watching YouTubes, playing their games, then they're totally tuned out, which means the only source of incoming information is from where? Outside. Outside, typically the school or their friends. So one of the key responsibilities of parents is to level set what kids are getting. So parents can give them that sense of values help them shape their character and formulate their morals. And that's the important thing that I think parents need to do for their children. If we don't do that, then to your point, yes, they're only going to get that from one side. And it is concerning when when you watch when you watch programming whether it's national news or online news, whatever your news source is, and you see people at the highest level in our government and even locally and sometimes in our local school systems, saying, we are the professional educators. We know better. We're going to take care of your kids. When they come to school, they're our kids. Well, then they're failing because if you look what happened just in Texas, if they they were their kids, then it it was their job to protect those children, much like we would protect our family unit, our household. So you want to go there now? We can go anywhere you want to go. I, I'm fine. I, you know, I can jet right down to that. Topic. I know you it's can. A... I know you can. Uh, it, you know, that, that's, that's such a uh, heartbreaking topic. It, it truly is. I mean, I, I don't have any words for the pain and suffering of those parents. I, no. I don't. There's just nothing. And, and I think it's, um, you know, again, my personal view is I think it's absolutely disgraceful to be talking anything in terms of politics, policy, Right now is the time for empathy, compassion, and reaching out with as many across the airwaves hugs as we can to those parents. Right. I, I can't even begin to comprehend losing a child in that manner. No. Well, I'm, I'm going to take you back uh, to uh, Sandy Hook and what happened after Sandy Hook. Not, uh, not with, the chil- with the kids. You know, we'll agree that was horrific. But in Connecticut, our school systems, we instituted a lot of changes. 
I know up at, at our school, we've got magnetic doors, locks, you know, we've got cameras, you have to be buzzed to get in. Now, you know, an active shooter can make a mess. But still, you know, we're doing some things uh, to do this. And evidently this, and I don't know if it's uh, completely true, but he was able just to walk right through the door. Well, and in one area that I, one thing I did hear, and again, I don't, I don't know all the details. But one thing I heard was, for whatever reason, that one door was unlocked. But, but you're right. I think Connecticut's done a lot of very good things in terms of securing entry, putting in secure areas where if you can be buzzed into the first door, there's a second door. There's some good security systems in place, and I don't want to get into all the details of those, but I think there are some good processes that limit easy access. But you're right. There's always the human element. Correct. Vigilance cannot ever end, ever. No, no, you, and, can, and you, that can't, means, you can't look the other way. No, not All for a time. minute. That means if, if, the, if the kids are going out to recess or if they're going out to the sports field, you still have to watch every single door. No, oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, uh, we had the Republicans shot up playing baseball baseball down in Washington that time, or Virginia, excuse me, and uh, things like that. No, it is. It takes uh, constant vigilance. It takes mom and dads getting involved and knowing what's going on in their school and, and saying, you know, yeah, we want a safe uh, safe place. Maybe we need um, more, to, I'm going to call them hall monitors for a lack mm -hmm. of a better term, but more moms and dads up at the schools. You know, because I, I know there are a lot of uh, dads or even moms that would tackle somebody like that, you know, uh, with disregard for their own life versus the children. And uh, so, yeah, maybe we need to have more of that going on. Maybe uh, we need to think about having armed security in the schools. And, you know, we talked about Murphy and he introduced a bill to get rid of armed security in schools and didn't want that there about three years ago. So, you know, it, it, the double speak that they go on back and forth and uh, it, it's just, you know, horrific. Well, Jeff, you make a, a good point, and I think that is the air needs to be cleared by the politicians. Which do you want? Are we going to respect our police? Are we going to respect the security that's, that is in our schools? And if we are, then let's say that loud and clear, that we, we, we understand the pressures that they're under, we respect them, we're going to support them, and dare I say it, and we're going to fund it. <clears throat> because if you don't, then you're not going to control the chaos that's out there. With regard to hall-type monitors, I, I think it's a, it's a good idea. Now, I don't know how the details would work, but it's a good point, you know, what is the level of deterrence of someone coming in if they see someone um, that is actually going to stop them in some way, shape, or form? An adult. Yeah. yeah. You know, because these are kids kids doing this. And, you know, if they run into adults, uh, granted, everybody's equal when you, you go in with firearms like that. But, yeah, it, it might have a... a you know what an effect, slow them down anyway. Okay, uh, we've got a caller, and uh, let us put our ears on, and wow, turn it down. Thank you. Caller, you're on the air. Yeah, hi, this is David. Hi, Jeff. Uh, I'm not sure who the other uh, host is tonight. Peter. Peter. Oh, hi, Peter. Hi, David. How um, are you? Good. Um, I don't know if any of you had a chance to, I know I listen to Steve Kerr, who's a basketball coach. He had a few comments regarding the shooting, and I think they're pretty poignant. Um, I don't know if any of you have heard it or saw it, but if, if you don't get a chance, to, you could probably YouTube it. Um, this, this is coming from a guy who, at 12, his father was assassinated. So he has some things. But, uh, Peter, you know, you mentioned, like, this is a time for empathy and healing stuff. Yeah, we all agree with that. The problem is, is that we we do this every time, every single shooting. We stop. Oh, we're going to grieve. We're going to do the half flag, but we don't take any action to prevent what happens. Now, you guys are just talking about school safety, and to be honest with you, most of that is a joke. Because think about this: I could pull up to a school right now. Oh, let's say not right now. School's out. Let's say early in the morning or in the afternoon when the kid's getting on the bus, I could be in my car 
and the kids walking out to the bus, I can just gun them down. I don't need to be in the school to gun down the kids, okay? So the problem is, why does an 18-year-old turns 18 able to go buy AR-15? What do you use those guns for? So, David, that's, David, that's David, that's David. The Republicans can't tell me yeah, yeah, why yeah. you need those guns. Why do you need those guns? Okay, so David, hang, hold on a second. Back up for a second. So let's take the first part of your comment. So if you're saying the kids are extremely exposed getting off the bus, going to school, or, or out, on, out at recess, what's your solution for that? There is no solution. The solution, the solution, there is, there's absolutely no solution to preventing some crazy lunatic who wants to create damage, okay? You can do all those things, but it's so easy. It's so easy. I don't even know why they bother going into school. I would just wait outside, gun them down before they go in the bus. I mean, you get about 50 or 60 at a hit. I mean, it's that easy. So, you know, securing the building, doing all these things that we did, we started 10 years ago, it obviously didn't stop what happened or what's been happening. But I would like to know why Republicans are against having background checks. Into the manner that you're talking, well, I just would I, I, like to, somebody to explain that. You know, I, why I, I'd like so hard about that. Okay, I'd, I'd like you know, I'm a Republican. I own a firearm, uh, and I, I uh, have nothing against guns. Either. Yeah, no, no, that. and I, I think the vast majority of us don't have a problem with. At least I know I don't have a problem with a background check. I mean, I have a pistol permit, and I went through a background check. You know, I've been printed and on and on, and so yeah, I don't have a problem with it. You know, but my other issue is if if a per, and he, you mentioned he was 18 years old. At 18 years old, he's old enough to serve in the military and use a weapon, and you know, will put his life in danger. So yeah, but you know, he can't. But he can't drink. Well, I know that. Drink, so you know that drugs. that's kind of messed up, isn't it? So uh, you know, so he messed up. Yeah. So so, what are we going to do? We want to we want to move everything to twenty one years old and hope that they're better at twenty one, or do we want to no, let I him don't. drink at eighteen? No, I, I, I to be honest with you, I don't really have a problem with someone getting a gun, even if they're eighteen, if they're legally able to do it. Right. But the fact that you can walk in and just buy two AR fifteens like on your birthday to me is totally ludicrous. Okay. You can't even get a driver's license. In a day. Yeah, like well, that. well, you, you know, here, here's another thing that's pretty interesting about uh, a driver's license. Uh, your driver's license is good in every single state in the union, from yeah. here to California and on and on. Yeah. And I have a Connecticut uh, state pistol permit to carry a pistol. Now, uh, it's it's much like a driver's license. Uh, why isn't it good in every single state? Why isn't it recognized across all the borders? I've been through all the background checks, and in Connecticut, we're a lot stricter than a lot of places. So, you know, I really believe things like that should be reciprocal. Yeah, no, I, I agree with the reciprocating laws, because there's a lot of them, particularly like in trade licenses. I mean, Yes. You can have a license and a trade in Connecticut, and it and it won't, and, it, and you could be taking the same test. It's not even applicable in Massachusetts. Right. So, Dave, <laughs> David, let me ask you a yeah. hypothetical, even though I'm not a big fan of hypotheticals. Okay. So, okay. So let, let's let's just kind of follow your your thought there. Um, we we take away the AR-15s, which, as we all know, is not a military weapon. Um, that's so we take away the AR-15, and he uses. A different weapon, a hunting rifle or a shotgun. Now, what's the answer? Oh, <laughs> what's the answer? Take away, I, I take away all the guns and I'd use my car. Oh, I'd kill enough people with my car. I mean, like, there's a million ways you could kill oh, someone. Well, but, so, David, but, I mean, so, David, so, David, easy. if if you're in, <laughs> if you're in, you know, a couple of the a couple of the areas that have the strictest gun laws, for example, Washington D.C. Chicago, um, they must not have any any violence with guns because there's you basically can't own a gun in Washington D.C. or Chicago, right? Uh, it, it, yeah. it, well, pretty much. As you, as you, at least I, I recall, you know, we I guess all in Connecticut, we all heard a lot about with guns and gun control, and they basically said if you know, because the, the other people I met people in the dining room, oh, they're going to take away guns to come to our house. That's that's total bull. The government's not that good. 
<laughs> well, they, they, obviously, they're not that good because we've no, got a lot of bad good, stuff yeah. going on. But it would take them. It would take them to rid all the guns in this country. It would take them a hundred years. Yeah, they never. It, it'll, it'll never be get done. Years to rid them. So, David, you're convinced if we took away all the AR-15s, no, no, then no, there I would not be any quickly. more school shootings. No, I, I didn't say take I, away. I AR-15. think David's question is why is it so easy for an 18 year old to go in and purchase? Two ARs. Now you know the, make, the, actually, the biggest don't mass shooting. Anybody yep. eighteen or over, anybody who wants to go get a gun, period. Just yeah. Why is it so easy to go get? Well, it? well, well, you know, and the largest mass shooting uh, was done by a gentleman with two pistols, and they weren't large capacity magazines. Wait, so, are you talking to one in Las Vegas? Uh, no. No, no, no. No one ever talks about that one, huh? Maybe. Right. But, you know, um, <laughs> so there, in like, you know, to what you're saying, there are a lot of ways and there are a lot of, here's the, here's the word, tools, whether it be an yeah. automobile, a pistol, rifle, a chemical. train, chemical, whatever, to dispose of human beings and cause carnage and inflict pain and harm. Yeah. So I, then, then the next thing you look at, mental health. Well, there you go. But, you know, we were talking about that in the beginning here when we're, we started to talk about, uh, you know, taking God out of everything. And, you know, uh, we've got a big mental health issue going on, I feel, in this country when we start talking about abortion. Well, um, I'm, you know what? Hey, what what's hey, that do to people? You know, I'm going to put this one out there because if we go back to what I, my, one of my opening comments was faith and family. If we look at faith and family, and I think all the faiths that I under, that I know, we're all considered to be in the same family. It's the same God, looked at many different ways. So we are all part of that family. If we treat each other like we're in the same family, if we can respect and be compassionate toward each other in that regard, if we stop dividing ourselves into how many different groups, how many different ways, if we, if we can be a little bit more, a lot more accepting and understanding, maybe, maybe we can be more, um, we can get through some of these difficult times. You know, I, I'm, I'm still heartbroken for all those families, and, and I, I feel so sad for, you know, the family of the person who did all that, where, I mean, they, from what I've, the little bit I've read, they're just as shocked and mortified, but they don't have any answers either. Yeah. So clearly this individual, um, you know, was, certainly had some serious issues that, you know, did not get addressed. All right. Okay, yeah. Well, Thanks, David. Yeah, there's, yeah, a, thank, there's, thank. A, there's, a no, there's no right answer or wrong answer to this whole subject. It's a very difficult one. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Good. Well, thank you for your call. Take care. You know, you know, you brought up another interesting part. You know, they um, there's only one race, and it's the human race. And we've got to stop letting. And I'm gonna go. And I'm not gonna say which ones or anybody like that. We've got to stop the politicians and these little fringe groups, whether it's the far right or the far left or anybody in between. Trying to, you know, divide us because that's all that's happening. Uh, we see divisions coming. You know, oh, this happened. Um, you know, sometimes I actually think, and I hate to say it, but some of this stuff is planned. You know, to, to take the focus off of what's happening. You know, nobody's talking about, you know, the gas price that just went up 30 cents the other day. You know, or, or home heating oil that's, a, you know, almost $7 a gallon and this type of thing. You know, when the cost of food, I mean, when, when you're struggling to feed your children, you know, working, and I'd like to know where all the people went. But anyway, um, yeah, stuff, people are going to fall through the cracks. Mm -hmm. Things are going to happen. But, hey. While we're waiting for things to happen, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Republic Forum. I'm Jeff, along with uh, Peter here, and uh, we're having a great conversation. And uh, I just forgot where we were while we were off the air. I, I'll tell you what, these senior moments are getting newer and fewer and farther between. That didn't work, did it? <laughs> no, it but, didn't. <laughs> I think we were going toward recessions. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. You know, we're, we were talking about uh, $6 gasoline uh, by the end of August. They're talking. You brought up a great 
point that uh, Christmas is going to come around the corner. And what are we going to get from uh, Governor Lamont and our state legislature? We're going to get the 25 cents back that they took off the gallon of gas. Happy New Year. Yeah, really. So, you know, um, these crazy policies, that, and this is like nuts. I mean, we were in energy independent just a few years ago, yeah. you know, and, and prices were low, and now they're almost triple what they used to be. It's, it's something seriously wrong here. And if we're talking about struggling now, how do you how do you do it with six or seven dollar a gallon gasoline heating oil that's at the same price? You can't heat your house. You can't feed your children. You can't pay the bills. You can't drive to work. What? Wh who's in charge and why are they driving us to this point? And why is the push to destroy the United States like this and destroy your livelihood and your way of life? They're actually doing that. And it's and it's the party that's in charge, okay? It's I'm going to call it the Biden cartel and all those people out there. And you know you can take it back to the Obama cartel, but something is seriously seriously wrong uh, with what's going on in this country because we've never seen this kind of shift with this kind of um, fer ferocity and speed. So yeah, no, we've really got to be on our toes. But we've got another caller. So, go ahead, Bill. You're on the air. Okay. Well, I was just following up on David, uh, David's call a little bit. Okay. I, I think one of the issues, at least in Texas, is the fact that the perpetrator could not buy a pistol because he was 18. But on the other hand, he could buy a long gun. Okay. And the Texas governor and the legislature refused to classify the weapons like he used as to, to declassify them as long guns. And, and in terms of the fact that it's not a long gun, it's not for hunting, it's for hunting people. It's, it, the, the, the firepower on that thing is unbelievable, and it doesn't belong in the hands of somebody who's 18, 19, or 20. Do you because they cannot make, they, their, their brains are not mature enough. This has been, this has been proven. To make those kinds of decisions. Well, you know, it's, at some point I will agree with you. There are a lot of 18-year-olds out there that their brains are not mature enough. Uh, well, to be, whether it's a long arm or a short arm or any arm in between. I, I'll agree with you there. Uh, do you own any uh, guns? The, what what does that matter? Well, you know, I uh, and and out some of the background on the long gun uh, controversy versus the pistol is the long gun is harder to conceal, and so they figured it was safer um, than the pistol. It's easily to the conceal. Point is, the point is, if if you have a long gun, you have the capability of gunning down a whole bunch of people or anybody in security, and, and you can do it. Officer. You can just gun them down. You just pull the trigger once, and the number of rounds that that, that puts out is unbelievable. Oh no, no, we're not. An AR-15 is not a fully automatic weapon. It, it's so one tri trigger. More for the number of rounds that you have uh, is, is instantaneous. Well, it, I, I it, disagree it, with you. I oh don't no, you no, know what you're it, about. It, a ten-round magazine. About. It's not automatic. It's it, correct. Uh, it's not automatic. But the, num the, the number of rounds you can fire in a short period of time is incredible. Well, you know, in Connecticut, we, power, we have a policy that's a 10-round mag, so you can get off 10 rounds as fast oh, no, as you can. Oh, no, that's if you have, you, you have legal magazines. Well, so yeah, but they're all registered. Have, they're registered, have, right? Who's registered? The, 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 the magazines. There was a law in Connecticut yeah. that if you've got 30-round no, mags, about, they're supposed no, no, to be I'm registered. No, I'm talking about Texas. Oh, well, I, I, I don't know what the exact laws I know you are in don't Texas. Know because I, it's obvious you don't know. Right. So well, I don't is, live in Texas. Yeah. Well, the fact is we're talking about a crime that happened in Texas, an unbelievable slaughter of young children. Isn't, the, so the isn't, isn't that the same uh, gun that Adam Lanza used? So it was right here in Connecticut, too. Yeah, but we're talking about the availability in Texas right now. Okay. Things have happened in Connecticut. You already mentioned that, right. but th those those things did not happen in Texas. Was your is your is your guest still there? Let yes. him talk about that. Okay, he, he seems to be an expert. He's right here. Okay. Here he comes. Yeah. Hi, Bill. I can't wait. 
<laughs> hey, Bill. Um, well, first of all, I'm, I'm not an expert, but I guess I have a couple of questions. Why so, are you talking about it then? <laughs> because we have an opinion and we're allowed to voice oh, our okay, opinion so, like you. The, uh, what? So, the First, no, the first well, Amendment expect, still allows us to have an opinion. The First Amendment, and the, right, and the Second Amendment says you can have guns. Yes. But not any kind of gun. How about, why, why can't people in Texas or Connecticut buy a tank? Well, you can. You, you, can, buy, you, you, you can, can buy a tank. Yes, you can. You can buy a deuce and a half. You can buy a uh, personnel transport that's armored. How about a, mor how about a mortar? Nah, I don't think they'll let you have a mortar or a bazooka. How, how, how about a, you, 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 you got to have an FFL for that, which is a federal firearms license. Yeah, so, okay. So, Bill, let me go back to your question, because my question back to you is, so what you're saying is if he wasn't able to buy the AR-15, then he wouldn't be able to buy any other long gun? No, no, not at all. You can buy a long gun. The fact is you, you, have, you, have, to, you have to handle a, a, a weapon with, with increased firing capacity, okay? Uh, and it shouldn't have been classified as, as a shotgun or a, a typical rifle. That's all. Oh, okay. You're saying the firepower of the AR-15 is, is, is not greater than those other weapons I mentioned, that's that's what you're saying, I and I disagree. That. That's my well. Well, it seems to be what you're saying. You're implying I, that when you no, talk to me. I didn't. I didn't say that. Well, well the, the, the way you the, phrased it about long guns, you just said something about long guns. No. What did you just say? No, that, that's what, that's not what I said. What did, what my, did you say? Well, <laughs> actually, I di I didn't choose. I didn't discuss one one weapon over the other. What I'm saying is. The the AR the AR-15 has a fi high velocity round. Um, yes. And, yes. But yeah. but there are there are pretty much any other any other long gun since that's what we're talking about would would not have would would have had the same the same impact. It, it'd be the same tragedy. It'd be the same tragedy. It doesn't matter what the weapon is. You know, we're we're off the track of well, well, it's no, not it's of not it's not the firepower. it's not I'm the weapon about, or the firepower. What my, it really comes point, down to my point is, is firepower. What? No, I just I, I disagree with you. Okay. If you have that, right. if you have that kind of power firepower and you can fire off as many rounds and you have you have the capacity a uh, high capacity uh, container. Okay. Yeah. So, I, so you, I think you can I think kill either, a lot more people in a short period of time. So, That's a fact. so either you've got better military experience than I do, or you've got some kind of law enforcement experience that maybe I'm not following. No, I, you know, I, I understand where it, if you have a 30 round magazine and yeah. it, it takes one trigger pull uh, as fast as you can pull that trigger, you can get rid of 30. Yeah. You can send 30 rounds down range. That's my point. Okay. All right. And what, what, uh, what, what, that's what, true. What, what, why did the guy get this gun when he's 18? That's uh, another factor. Well, he why obviously he... wanted it. It's kind of like, why'd you get your oh, driver's no, no, license no, no, when you were 16? He wanted it. It's the people who, who sold it to him, okay, allowed him to have it because the law in Texas allows for that. Well, That's what it, it's all it, about. it used to allow for that here in Connecticut. I don't care what it was then. Oh, okay. Things have changed. Things, things are always changing. Things have changed because things have changed in Connecticut because little babies were massacred. Period. Uh, okay. Things, have, things need to change. What, what, in Texas. What, what's your solution? Well, the things that have to change in 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 Texas so that people like this are, can't legally buy. Now you could say, well, they could illegally buy them, and I would say that's a possibility. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, but they're able to just to walk in without a background check and, and pick this thing up. Yeah, and go I, out I, and I, I don't know if background checks are required in uh, Texas. Oh, okay, then, okay, well. I don't know if they are. Thank, right. thank, thank you for admitting that. Well, I, that's a, I, big, part of this, that's like a big part of this discussion. Yeah, well, I, you know, like I said, I'm familiar with Connecticut. I don't live in Texas. Okay, well, then Same. maybe you shouldn't be talking about what happened in Texas. Right. I think he went. Looks like he hung up. Yep. Okay. Okay. It's all right. Yep. And um, so 
but we'll continue to talk about what happened in Texas. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, you know, and, and there are a lot of people that really think that, you know, because it has a 30-round magazine, it does that. But, you know, uh, knowing a little bit about guns and ballistics, yeah, I mean, you could take a 50 cal BMG and, uh, and line 30 people up and go through all 30. Hmm. with one you know but uh you know that that's a little bit ridiculous but the caller before that you know also mentioned that if somebody's out to do this you know it's uh, it's unfortunate that this seems to be the uh instrument of choice but th there are many many ways to inflict yeah. this kind of damage yeah i i, I and and that that's that was my point about i mean it it doesn't matter what the weapon was right. it doesn't matter if it if it was a Thirty-round magazine, or if it's a, you know, he, you if know, it's a shotgun with, with you know, ten rounds, it doesn't matter. No, you We're, could, you the, could the, a couple point, of glocks or something is, like that. The, the, the real point is, what causes an eighteen-year-old adult to to cross the line and do this to a fellow human being? And and I think the ultimate tragedy is to look in the eyes of children and find this acceptable to do that. I think we have to just put it on the table. That's just evil. Oh, it is. I mean, this is beyond anything else. And I think that's part of the pain and the agony that we're all going through is we can't explain it. I don't have an answer. This is just evil. This is whatever it was, whatever the trigger was, whatever the cause was, um, clearly, and, and this is to, to Bill's point, whatever it was that caused him or triggered him to go buy these weapons and then go do this act i mean i can't imagine i just it, it's beyond comprehension you know he shot a family member and then went to the school right and i think it's just um so it, it's, it's painful to even to, it's just painful in the heart to even say it or think about well, it. well you know as our callers mentioned but you know they're talking about the tool he used mm -hmm. okay how, how about uh, the video games this person was watching. H how about, you know, um, uh, the news uh, channels he was watching that was desensitizing him to the, the value of human life? You know, and to the point where just taking lives doesn't really mean anything. I mean, he's down in Texas. He's watching people stream across the border. Maybe he's paying attention to, the, you know, what's going on there. And that they're, you know, we're, we're all watching things that are happening and there don't seem to be any consequences. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you, you mentioned Chicago. There, there are people dying in Chicago every weekend, every day. There are shootings up there. But we don't hear that. And, you know, uh, well, thank God at this point, nobody's done a school up there or anything like that but um yeah all this stuff desensitizes us yeah. and then they divide us by race and creed and and uh you know just the way we think and it, it's wrong and, uh, and and we're we're actually i think our political system our school system the lack of morality uh, that this country is starting to show is actually growing these type of people Okay, I think we're actually because we're not we're not enforcing this. We're, we're we've defunded the police. Uh, the people that stormed the police station in Seattle or whatever uh, city that was and took it over and st started on fire. There were no consequences mm -hmm. for all that type of thing. And and you see, you have young kids seeing this type of thing uh, go on and say, you know, I can get away with this, or I just don't care. Mm -hmm. You know. And one of the things that always, you know, upsets me is when this happens is, number one, I don't like it when they turn the gun on themselves. And I don't like it when they're um, taken out, even though they need to be, because we don't get to the bottom of it. We can't sit and talk with these people and say, ask them, what mm -hmm. was the trigger? Why did you right. do this? And I hope they just don't shrug their shoulders and say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But they did, because obviously it's premeditated. Yeah, or at least, it's, you know, I'm not a well, professional, but it kind of looks that way. You go buy the guns, you buy the ammunition, and you go do this, yeah. No, I, I, I think, you know, you covered about ten different things that are all factors. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it's, we go, back to, we go back to what's right and what's wrong. Where do we get that right and wrong decision-making from? And, and we do get it as kids from school. We get it as kids from home. And right and wrong has to be acceptable across all aspects of society. It can't be, well, my right and wrong is this and yours is that. There can't be two truths. No. There can only be one truth. Well, but, but, 
what you what you were saying there is a good point is when you look at this group does not have a consequence or a punishment for their action and this one maybe gets away with it but this one is punished and you start looking and saying are there different levels of justice or is there different levels of punishment and you and you look at that and every time we go around the room when we look at these different things that happen and I'm not talking just about school shootings but when you look at it and you say was was there already legislation on the books well yeah there was well why didn't we enforce that right you know we have we have people that do some pretty horrendous things you know person to person crime is really is really outrageous um, you know and I was following a couple of things that are going on in New York City I mean that 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 uh, gentleman that was on the subway and he was just shot in cold blood no reason somebody just walked up shot him on the subway he was just going to work and you go where did that come from and but but you look at that and you go we already have laws on the book that that guy shouldn't have had a gun because you can't have a gun in New York correct so if we're not enforcing the laws we have if we're not enforcing the right and the wrong then we get everything is all of a sudden everything's gray Right. Well, so then, so then people act out, and then it's like, well, wait a minute. If they were able to act out in their gray, then why can't I? So it's who's be, who's becoming the judge. What happens is when somebody does is is a, arrested for a crime, and they are back out on the streets before the paperwork is complete. You have to scratch your head and say, okay, something is amiss here. Either either we're going to have laws and, and follow them because don't ask for new laws. Don't no. ask to don't ask for more restrictive anything if you won't even Enforce. follow what you have. Correct. But you know what what you're talking about here too also uh, for a lot of people just breeds contempt for the whole judicial and law system because, you know, uh, they say it's the law, but, you know, today um, they try and rule us with the law. Not what, and a lot of times it's not morally right mm -hmm. or morally correct. It's just the law. And it's used as a tool, much yeah. like other tools are used to, to keep people down. Okay? I really think they, in, you know, uh, enact some laws to, to punish the public. Or to keep their thumb on us. But you're right. They don't enforce the rules that are on the books. And if, you, if you're if you arresting somebody and, and the police officer is doing their job, they should not be in a revolving door. Yeah. And the other thing is, you know, we just had Joe Biden sign an executive order that creates a database of uh, bad police officers, so to speak. It takes away some of their immunities. Uh, and, you know, a bunch of other stuff. And when we should be, you know, refunding the police department, bringing them back, you know, uh, adding more officers, you know, uh, having a resource officer that's a police officer at the schools, this, that, and the other thing. Um, they're always going to be soft targets. You can never stop everything and everywhere. You know, uh, it's just too difficult. But, you know, it goes back to uh, we need to... Talk to these kids early on, start at the proper education with what's right and wrong. Not mm -hmm. whether it's against the law or it's not against the law, but just plain, simple human decency. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and that can't just happen in our schools. It ha has to happen in, in all the different areas where our kids are, whether it's in, you know, it's at home, it is at school, it's in their social settings, it's in their recreation. Um, I mean, one of the... One of the uh, roughest place have you been to a, um, a recreational uh, baseball game kids baseball game no i mean you know we ask our kids to behave a certain way oh and, and the parents what, the, go what these parents do to the ref you know you know you, these these most of these refs you know it's they're giving of their time you know it's a they make a little bit of a stipend but the, some of these people might walk might um two or three games yeah and the abuse they get is just outrageous. And so you see parents behaving that, and the kids are on the field going, well, if parents can do that. And then we're shocked when the kids act out. Right. So, again, it's, it's having that behavior and, like you said, the decency to respect each other. If you don't like a call, I got a great solution. 
learn how to be an ump, and go stand behind that plate for a while. Yep. It is not easy. No, I'm sure so, it's not. But the other thing, too, is, you know, uh, we talk about it at school. You know, your kid acts out at school, the teacher calls home, and, and the parents say, that wasn't my kid. My kid doesn't act like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, when I, my parents got calls from the school, and they got plenty, uh, <laughs> I got my butt beat. No question about it. I got home, and I was in more trouble than I could have gotten in trouble at school. I thought you were a good kid in school. I was a good kid in oh. school when I was there. <laughs> when you were there. <laughs> I want to hit one more thing before sure. we... Uh, one at a time. Um, hit Matt. He hit, needs it. No, no. no. <laughs> um, th this is important because this actually popped up. I saw this um, um, out there online, um, and and I think it caused a little bit of a conversation. I know one of the things that we tend to say is our thoughts and prayers are with the families, and I know some people say, you know, I don't like it. I'm tired of it. Stop it. You know, fix this or fix that, make a law, you know, whatever. They go right after the behavior, behavior of the perpetrator. But I want to tell you, last August, when there was that suicide bombing in Kabul, and we lost those military members, um, we attended one of the funerals for Sergeant Johanny Rosario. And she went out into the crowd to help people come in that had the paperwork. And we went to the, her service. She was she was lived in in uh, Lawrence, Massachusetts. And we went up there, and it was in the local stadium. And one of the things that the mom said, she said, "I want everybody to say my daughter's name." And she had the entire audience say the name, not once, not twice. We said it five times. And she said, "Remember her." She said, "We want her in your thoughts. I we want you in our thoughts. We want you to remember our family." And then she said, and we want your prayers. So when we say thoughts and prayers, it's not just something to say. This is from a grieving mom who says, that's what we need. We want that. Right. We, we want to know that you remember my daughter who died for our country, especially this Memorial Day. So maybe all the listeners can think of her. It's Sergeant Johanny Rosario and all the other people who died in Kabul. And it's important that we do have have them in our thoughts and in our prayers just like we have all these families extended families and let's not forget all the first responders who had to go see that carnage that's oh. they're not going to forget oh no 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 so I we mean, can that's what i'm saying we can save the gun debate we can save the policy debate right now let's put these people in our in our in our hearts and in our minds and not forget them Absolutely. And, I, and, you know, and I think that's one of the best tributes we can give to these people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, barring any kind of meaningful legislation, which I don't think there is anything that can be done. But uh, I'm sure some people will try. Uh, the other thing I'd like to say is, you know, uh, some of the showboating that's going on by some of these politicians is actually horrible. I mean, you know, to try and uh, politicize this tragedy and uh, make points, I think, is really, really horrid. But anyway, we're out of time. Want everybody to have a great holiday weekend. Until next week, good night and God bless.